Hey everyone, Ed Dudley. I hope you're all doing well. Coming from Durham, North Carolina in the United States. I'm happy to have you join us. I have an amazing co-host with me and we have an amazing speaker and I'll let them introduce themselves. So my friend from across the pond, my girlfriend, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good, Ed. Hello, world. I'm Charmaine Subramani. I'm from the city of gold, Johannesburg, South Africa, and I'm going to hand you over to beautiful Divya. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the compliment. So I'm from India and I'm uh, based out of uh, Chennai city. And uh, I'm very happy to be joining this amazing space of love and light. Oh, thank you for being here, Divya. Uh, before we start, just very quickly, Sanskrit names usually actually have a meaning attached to it. Yeah, yes. So, so what does your name mean? Uh, it says divine, divine power. Ooh, I like that. I yeah. love that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I never I, knew I like... that. <laughs> yeah. It's very common, um, Ed, with African names. So mm -hmm. in wherever you go in Africa, it's usually the name means something. Oh and God. there's a lot of commonality between the African culture and the Indian culture, strangely enough. Yeah, yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't so interested in uh, knowing the name of my name uh, because I was not so religious. But later on, I learned that uh, you don't need a religion to learn spirituality. And then, OK, I, I tried like, OK, let me see what's the meaning of the name. And then I got, OK, it's divine. <laughs> It's beautiful, actually. Ed, does your name mean anything? Yes, my name means guardian. Oh, okay. So, Ed, so it's, it's, we, it's full, first full name is Edward, which means gar, rich guardian. You know. Well, we are in good hands, Devia, clearly. Yeah, okay. I know yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. Amazing to hear. Yeah. Devia, I'm, you know, I've been following you for a while and you are such a ball of positive energy right yeah. and um and and you have so much to give this world in in terms yeah. of what you land as a clearly young beautiful individual i'm curious though what got you started on this journey yeah um actually uh, uh i did all for myself at the beginning uh, i i was being brought up in a way that i have to please people i have to live according to the norms of society and I got a job because I had to feed my family and myself. And uh, at one point, when I was at my age 25, I started facing a kind of existential crisis where I, I lost meaning and purpose in my life. I was just running like a mission to earn a lot of money and then a lot of money and then a lot of money. And it was going on. But I couldn't able to have a connect with my job. And I felt more or less like a breakdown, like why am I even exist? And uh, when I try to get some contact, that, that's my friends. And I, when I try to talk about that, like, you know, I, I'm facing something like that and I, I'm losing uh, meaning in my life. And then the answers that I get got immediately was like, you know, the way our life is like that. Everybody faces some other, other pro problem. And, you know, we are here to suffer and uh, what to do. Everything is a destiny. So these kinds of answers were what I got it. So I wasn't luckily. I was so intuitive and I'm even now intuitive. So I, I, I thought like, let me do a research on my own. On what was the way out of all the sufferings that I got. And then um, I got introduced first to the book named uh, The Secret Law of Attraction. Uh, I, it was like a key. <laughs> I read that. Rhonda yeah. Byrne, isn't it? Yes, yes. It was like a key, it like, okay, there is something that we can control in our life. There is something. And then it, it started unfolding on its own way and then i got into this book we named the uh, blue clip on the biology of belief and then i moved to the power of the subconscious mind and then it was like unfolding the layer was unfolding for myself to make me understand that my destiny is totally in my hands and my thoughts are so powerful so this is how my journey started i was a complete negative person that you can't even imagine that i have completely transformed from that level of um face to this oh that is beautiful I, I'm, I'm curious when you started this journey and you changed yes a positive what yeah. were the reactions of, of the people around you that were closest to you 
<laughs> it was very judgmental. It was people started thinking like, "Devi, are you going to be a monk or what?" Uh, because uh, taking care of well-being was very new to my family. Not my ancestors or even the ancestors uh, ancestors were not used to taking care of themselves. For them, taking care of themselves means okay. If you feel sick, then you've got to go to your doctor, take the tablet, and that's it. They they didn't have the awareness of how the thoughts and perceptions and the belief systems. The subconscious mind, limiting beliefs. So, if I talk about this, it was very Greek and Latin for my family. Uh, so, I had to go through this judgment of window of not one or two years. I think more than three years. Like, okay, she's doing something so weird. What's ha- what's happening with her? Why is she doing all this? Divya, you see, it's your age to enjoy. But I see you read a lot of books and uh, being like a monk. Or what 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 is your? Uh, um, A future plan like that. Uh, I used to get those uh, judgmental comments on me. <laughs> and how did you deal? It's difficult. It's difficult being a loner because when people yes. don't think and don't act okay. like you, and yes. it can be like quite disappointing and um, it's difficult to handle. Yes, I, I yes, personally, yes. I, I I'm a I used to be a bit of a loner because I think differently, I act differently, I speak differently at times, and um, and. So you don't really belong to a clique or a community, and being yeah. Indian, I can understand the yeah. challenges you would have faced yes. because you live in India and I live yes. here. But yeah. the challenges are still real. How did you yes. deal with that, Divya? Um, like, I think something was inherent in me that always tell me to stand for myself. I was, I was the person, and I'm still the person who stand for myself. Yeah, for example, when I was doing my twelfth class, where people prefer to go to school, I I did a homeschooling on my own. So I I start at that age itself, but somehow when I do what is right for me, I don't really worry about what's the other people's opinion. It doesn't matter to me anyway. So uh, even I got a lot of judgments about it. I I know what I was doing is right. So I didn't. Uh, Uh, I don't. I didn't have the urge to please people or ex- over explain myself. Like you know, yeah. I'm doing this because of that or that. Even if I explain, they're not able to relate to it. That's a different story. <laughs> But I, I continue what I do, and it was it was like I have to shed my old self, and uh, I have to lose some connections and the uh, from with the people, and I have to make the space empty for new people to come in. So it's it's like a lot of patience. consistency yeah that's so, how it was I'm, i'm curious i'm you know curious you know when you had to shed these other people that have been in your life for a while yeah how did you feel and then you know i know you said you didn't care about other people and how they were feeling as you were morphing into the just the new yeah. you um uh, how did they how did they feel when you were just severing ties yes uh how did i feel honestly means i felt so good uh because uh, i was being i don't obviously i had i uh, since i was in that vibration or frequency of uh, attracting people of my vibe which was, i was in so low vibe so i i had friends of that kind who was always judgmental who mock people humiliating i didn't understand that it's all because of me who was attracting people of that vibe but when i started raising my vibrations uh, people started obviously this they'll start everything starts with the judgment right so they started mm-hmm. judging you know divya you have changed a lot we are not able to connect with you anymore like that but slowly 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 the five times calls becomes four times and then three two one and then it's gone so this is how uh, it has happened <laughs> It's such a beautiful thing. I mean, we are the average of the five people we spend the most yeah. amount of time with, right? Yes. And it's so important to vibrate at that level, attract the right people into our lives yes. to be able to yes. give to the world what we want to. Um, yeah. This is the, the next question is to my boyfriend Ed. So Ed, what else do you want to ask this amazing woman? Oh, wow. So you know, I, I jumped on your LinkedIn and I saw you got a mass amount of followers um, on LinkedIn. You put some positive. um information and thoughts out out there um what's what's next on your journey uh i think uh, right now i'm doing uh, the coaching as a side hustle or uh, whenever i get time i do it maybe uh, in future i may be uh, like uh, lisa nichols or tony robbins or robin sharma or jay sherry 
somewhere you can see me somewhere around that corner <laughs> oh you have to have the vision that's beautiful yes that yes, is yes. And, and having engaged with you and the way you think, Divya, and the way you actually land your messages, I mean, you are on that that path to make that a reality. Oh, thank um, you. I so feel much. it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Divya, when you're actually coaching um, people, right, um, there's like we all like uh, coaches, whether you're a professional coach or whether you're just somebody mentoring or you're just a kind soul wanting to make a difference in people's lives. We always have tools that we pull out depending on what people yes, are going yes, through. Yes, 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 yes. What is your top two tools that you actually utilize or have been utilizing recently, especially with COVID and all of those things? Yeah. What, what do yeah. you? Uh, I, I get answers from their suggestions itself. Uh, I don't insist answers. So when I coach people, I normally, uh, I, I believe uh, when you read the book, The Science of Getting Rich, where the author says like, you have everything you need. You have That's everything. Amazing. So people who come in already have everything they need. All they have is just a block in the mind that says, you know, either it procrastinate or it says like, you know, I don't have an answer. Then I'll ask questions. Are you sure you don't have an answer? Then they'll start thinking like, I think I may have an answer then it will become a must so a coach is not like um, um uh, you you insist on something or you advise on something it's more like enabling them to find the answers and then i'll get the act action items from them itself i don't insist on that and i'll tell you i i'll tell them like what's what's the next action items that you can do like that and they'll be like aha aha moment like yeah yeah, yeah i think i can do that and that's it so most of the blockers, even in my case, the my the, my perception was my blocker. The way I look at the world was the biggest blocker. I saw everything as like people are very manipulators. Uh, uh, we are here only to please people. We are here only to earn money. And we don't have any good people in the world. So these kinds of perceptions I had. But once I started changing the perception, I start attracting people, environment, and everything that confirms the same. Oh, that's so powerful, actually. I love that. Yeah. It is like, it's, it's just the importance of actually freeing your mind and being open. Is, yes. is, 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 it's actually a magical tool. Unless you yeah. go through the journey, you yeah. don't actually reap the benefits. And people would yes. think, family, friends, whatever, you really like lost it. But yeah. once they see what you, man you manifest, then they have the desire in the world to actually change their yeah. way because they yeah. see results and, it's, and it's um, a mindset thing. Yeah. definitely a mindset thing so many people are yes. they got their mind locked on a yeah. certain situation or how they've been or how things have always been and once you yeah. unlock your mind to the possibilities of everything yeah you know, it's, it's 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 like a weight has just been lifted off you like you're walking yes. lighter uh everything is just more positive you know so i'm i'm, I'm big into mindset especially yes. when you're yes. young if we can get our young people yeah. with mindset Absolutely. shifts, the yeah. rest is easy. Yeah, I think the uh, young people are more controlled uh, by the parenting and yep. uh, society needs. Oh, yeah. And they have their vision is more controlled, I believe. Uh, at least in my life, I've been controlled, not in the sense of uh, hatred, but in the sense of protection. Like, they don't want me to be so vulnerable to many things. So there was a sense of control imposed upon me that in turn caused a limiting beliefs on my mind. That That's such a luck. But not just to, like it happens here in South Africa, Ed, like where we want to tell our kids what to do, what not to do, how life should yeah. actually be. Oh, that's but I don't think it's... The States. Is it, is it the same <laughs> sort of... Yeah. You're gonna go yes. to, you need to go to this school. This is what you, yeah. need, to get a good, you need to get a good job. You know, yeah. with benefits and yeah, it's yeah. it's it's still yeah. here. Yeah, it's, it's like when I decided to leave the corporate world, I had to. I'm, I mean, I was old when I decided to do that, right? <laughs> but I still had to fly down home to tell my dad this is what I intend doing, and his response to me: "You're not going to have a job. Did you actually study all of these things to do nothing?" No, you're not. It was like, Dad. Yeah. I'm 46 years old. <laughs> yeah. I'm a they married still try to, Yeah. They still try to control your perception. Yeah. They, because they think that it's it's the way of showing protection for you. 
but it is at some point it's making us so stressful and frustrated because not being able to be ourselves is the biggest stress that i have ever seen yeah. in my uh, life i mean those are words of wisdom those are like really 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 powerful for for the viewers to actually like connect with not being yourself yeah. is the biggest yeah. stress you know yes. You know, Divya, you've com you're very young in comparison to um, the other two people on this call. Speak for um, yourself. <laughs> 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 like, like, what, like, what was your trigger point that to go, you know what, I'm going to be Divya and I'm going to be myself. It's a very hard thing, but was there something or was it just a phase or a journey that you went through? Actually, um, luckily, uh, I got into the job where it uh, makes me handle a lot of people. So my entire job itself is to handle people. It was more or less like people management. And when I got into the people management, I, I was even more young, like 24 or something. Uh, uh, it was around 25. I was the kind of person who ignored negativity, who, who don't even handle people. If I see someone who's so mean or hurtful, I just stay away from them but i don't handle them but my job demanded me to handle those kind of people too because i'm into people management i cannot just ignore the people i, I have to get the work done from them too and it was so hurting to go back to them again and again and again and get hurt and i will go to the restroom and cry you know nobody knows that they, they'll think like you know you're a manager but <laughs> i'll be coming with a red eyes and they'll be like are you okay it's just, it's just cold nothing else but i'll cry and come out so uh, because i didn't know and uh, it was so easy for someone to point out like you know you, you hired someone who's so young i think she don't have this emotional maturity like that sure. so i cannot able to show that out too so that's where i started relying on books of joe desmond's on how to break the habit of being yourself and he discussed a lot about it. And then there's Eckhart Tolle, the power of now, where he, he makes us detach with our mind and body and ego, identity of separation. Oh, yes. So, yes, so, so a lot of things. And then uh, I, I started liking what I do and I started loving it because it is making me grow in many ways. And it gives me a lot of liberation, the true liberation, right? Okay. Some people say, like, with freedom comes the enslavement too. Like, uh for, for when people say like you know you know i'm free but they have their own habits that is making them enslaved but uh, liberation is totally a different understanding I, I started liberating myself from this limiting beliefs societal pressure on us a lot of things i learned something today because i say i am the change and free right but you yeah. pointed me like freedom is still like a limit Whereas liberation yes. is something else. So yeah. thank you for that insight. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> you, you mentioned a fair amount of books. So towards the end, I would like for you to land two books that you would think would be useful to our, to our viewers. But later on, um, yes. you could possibly share that. Um, so you want me to uh, share the two books? No. W like later on, maybe you can just share with us the two books that that uh, yeah, for our for our listeners to, yes. to to engage with if that's really going to make a difference um you're also part of this the the slasher generation ed and i are not but now we are actually we like podcasters all of those amazing things you're also a scrum master yeah tell me a little bit about that yeah. or tell us so, a little bit about that yeah sure why not so the people management rule that i was talking is about scrum master only so it's yeah. more or less like 20% about the scrum process. It's a it's a booming process in the IT industry. It's, it's like okay. most happening process. So I learned the process of uh, this to teach people. But what happened is the process is just 20% and 80% is handling people for their mindset. So that's where I had to face a lot of people. I have to um, uh, understand the people uh, some people are narrow-minded, some people are broad-minded. So it is very difficult for me to take up the role completely because it's just 20% of process and 80% of mindset. Sure. So and that's that, That's what my turning point in my life. Uh, I wanted to understand people. So it's all started with some personal group authors and books. And then um, I, I clearly now are able to understand like why people behave the way they behave. 
And that's so that's, that's very important because that's the if we if if we don't know what is causing them to behave on us, we'll go mad on ourselves, not on them. <laughs> like, what's wrong with me? What did I do wrong? I'm not good enough. I'm not capable enough. So when we understand uh, their behavior is because of their state of mind, it has nothing to do with us. That's powerful because that's one of the things that I, I always try to do when I run into someone that is challenging or difficult. I always try to sit back and say, all right, why are they like this? What happened in their life yeah, to yeah. make them like this? Sometimes it's something from childhood. Sometimes someone's going Go through to. a situation, like maybe a divorce or yeah. something happened. So I always try to sit back and not be judgmental. It's like, yeah. all right, what's going on? And I, and I always ask people, how are you feeling? Yeah. Because if you're feeling good, yeah. you're going to be in a better mood and good person. But if you're, yes, you know, yes. people will say, oh, you know, I'm okay. Well, okay. On a scale of one to 10, how are you feeling? 10 being I'm absolutely amazing. One, I feel like, no, I, I'm going to give up. And then anyone that's above, below a six, I want to, all right, what's going on? How, how can I, how can I help you? And that is such a powerful question. I mean, if I can just reflect <clears throat> in some of the conversations, Ed and I, we, we chat regularly. Um, there was one time when I was feeling really, really, really bad. So I usually go, I'm amazing because I believe in the power of words and the power of positive thinking. And that moment, I was like, Ed, I'm not feeling great. And we spent the whole time chatting about me. And he okay. gave me that space to just <laughs> offload. Because even the best of us, no matter how positive we are, we do have those down moments that you just need yeah. to offload to because yes, if you yes. carry that baggage that load is heavy so ed may i say thank you for that moment you know Divya, yeah. you talked about vibrations the vibrations they go up and down and sometimes yeah. our vibration might be down and you know we're feeling a certain way and then sometimes our vibrations are really yeah. high and a lot of positive energy and a lot of yes. light going up yeah yeah and that's why it's very important to surround ourselves with uh, good people we cannot be in internally happy all the time so we yeah. need some people who who actually uplift us and motivate us it's very important because they say that humans are social animals right we so are we right need, yeah. <laughs> so we need people we definitely need people yeah i have another question ed i seem to be talking more than you today i'm sorry it's fine <laughs> Ed and I are actually like gender ad activists and we advocate for, for, for women, like gender equality and safety and all of that. India has over 1.3 billion people, right? Like it's yeah. a lot of people. Yes, yes. It is. I mean, if I look at South Africa, we have 60 million people. And Ed, you guys have about 320 odd million. Yeah. 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 So, so in comparison, you guys like are a powerhouse yeah. from a population point yeah. of view. Yeah. What is, how, being a, being a young female, like a young woman, being in a, um, a managerial position, how do you manage um, the male sector? Are they respectful? Are they easier to handle than women? I would love, I'm curious to know from an Indian Indian India culture because we have an Indian South African culture yeah. and I'm sure you have an Indian USA culture. Yes. So I was just yeah. wondering. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to be so precise on it, I think it is, uh, if I say the answer, it would be very generic, but I want to be subjective too. So uh, if, if one take the leadership so seriously, they will know to handle both men and women. I so can. the leadership attitude is not gender based. It is irrespective of either you are a woman or a man so if if we if i don't take the, uh, the one thing that i did right in my life is taking leadership very seriously or the leadership qualities very seriously sure. so since i have taken it it is so easy to handle both men and women otherwise okay. it would be very difficult so if if either it is a man or women but if they don't know um, their own manual like how their body and mind works is it will be very difficult for them to handle the other people too sure okay fabulous i mean that's been quite insightful um like here in south africa uh, the older generation we find indian men do have a sense of entitlement where their wife Absolutely. will serve them 
yeah. you know is that yeah. the same in india or is it different it's the same as uh, age develops uh, i have seen people with ego too ego equally developed <laughs> 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 oh, that's such a powerful <laughs> ego. It's it's you know. Just yesterday, I, w- I was handling a very difficult um, situation from a board perspective, and like I often have to say, can you guys just check your egos and check and leave it at the door? Yes. Because yes, yes. until people can just ground themselves to be able to deal with the issue, we are not going to resolve anything because yeah. when ego comes into play, so yes, yes, yes. And you know, but you we have huge egos. No, not all of you, actually. I mean, I, I gravitate towards humility and humble people. Yeah. And yeah. it has been amazing. And yeah, so, yeah. And, and, and that's what the world needs, actually. Absolutely. It needs, say it, you say it. Yeah. So, uh, whenever I, I think uh, dealing with ego is beyond mind. It's, it's, it needs a spirituality. I'm not speaking of a religion, I'm speaking of spirituality. Sure. Like every, of course, I have seen myself standing in the shoes of ego many times. But thank God I have this awareness. Like when I'm in my ego, when I'm in my consciousness. Mm. So when I'm in my ego, I, I don't make any conversations with people because I would put myself, the ego as the attention or center of it. And I'll try to put someone down. So when I'm in my ego, I don't make any kind of conversations. I, I stay alone until the ego settles down. So one best thing that I've learned through Jay Shetty, uh, uh, like how to not be in ego is like every day I remind myself like, I'm not this body, I'm not this mind. I'm not this identity of I, I'm not the designation, I'm not the family, I'm just the energy using the body and the mind. So when I say this, I don't have this sense of I, I am um, like that. So I don't have that sense of I. So I, I, I don't put myself into the center. So I'll try to put myself, okay, I'm everything. I'm connected with everybody like that. Otherwise, uh, uh, it's not a shock or it's not a, a bad thing to know. Like most of the people have their ego <laughs> developed uh, as, as it grows, as the, as the experience grows, as the age grows, as the expertise grows, the ego also grows. And it's not, I don't see it as a bad thing, but it's a, it's like a lack of awareness. That's it. Sure. That was such a powerful statement, though, the lack of awareness. I mean, yes, yes. What, what is powerful is just like, I believe, like love, light, just humility. Those are the things that really matter and not the pay. Oh, money is important, don't get me wrong, but just chasing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I'm married. Money. I love money. I'm we, married we for money. money consciousness too. <laughs> I'm married for yeah. money. Look at my surname. Sue, brah, money. <laughs> yes. Ed, where are you? I'm missing you. Are you still there? I'm still okay, I see you now. I see you now. So, 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 yeah, so just being centered and aware just humbles you to be able to gift the world your gift because we all have a gift it's a matter of finding it and actually gifting it and especially through this covid phase people are going through a lot of emotional stuff yeah Yeah. yes and and it has humbled most people as a result of the hot yeah yeah and um as much as covid has been oh an evil it has been a lesson if you have an open mind yes, and are willing to yes, learn constantly it, 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 to be absolutely to be able to improve ourselves in many yeah. ways you know the blessing i have to say it is my boyfriend ed when i say boyfriend my husband knows he's my boyfriend and his wife my wife, and my wife girlfriend. knows my girlfriend too <laughs> oh that's an amazing way of having a bonding right <laughs> we do we have this incredible relationship yeah. we met during COVID, Ed? Yeah. yeah. Oh. We did. June 2020. Oh. June 2020. That was our connection. So, yeah, it's, it's, I've trained my mind to be able to look at positives, even in the worst situation. Yes, yes, that's very important. That's, that's going to be our turning point to see what, what are the things that we can be grateful about. Oh, my God. That, that- <laughs> I mean, I look at I look at COVID as a blessing, and you know, we talked about how difficult it was and challenging in yeah. life. But there were some beautiful things. People spent yeah. times with family. Thomas, it's not yeah, all that that's so true. Awesome. So true. You watched Even how the I... planet the planet started healing itself 
because we yeah. allowed it room to breathe. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And if, if someone asks me, Divya, you want to come back to office, I'll be like, you know, am I supposed to come back? No, I'm very good and content in my home itself. <laughs> Seriously, because when you when you see this uh, quote by Krishnamurti, who says like, you know, uh, it's always good to be alone. I mean, I, I, he says like he loved being alone because he don't want to be conditioned by the society. So we, we, we stayed away from the conditioning and it made us awaken a lot evolve a lot and find the true meaning in our life yeah <clears throat> that's so powerful and that's so true actually and and spending alone time yeah. is a way of actually just building your your thoughts your mind your awareness yes. and what is it that you want to put out i've i often tell um in this phase of my life weirdly so i feel that i could go into a remote island and actually live there yeah but still yes. be connected Yes, yes, yes. Still be yes. connected. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to a remote island. I just need to have our sports channel on here, and I'm I'm pretty really good. As yeah. long as I have the sports channel, I can watch right there. Because we're we're in the midst of something right now called March Madness here in the states. Yeah. And what that is, that is um, basketball, college basketball, university basketball, playing each other for the national championship. So yeah. So. No, but, but the people, point. The people point who love. I'm sorry, please go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry, Debbie. You I, go. I have seen people who really love solitude can make the best out of their relationship because they don't have codependency stuff. Like uh, they're not looking for a partner for their need. They they look for a partner for compliments and support. Exactly. So if there is no codependency, I think both of them will have an amazing mental health and that will radiate from them to the to their partner too. That I have seen. Yeah. It is powerful. Are th- you know, it's like, are you really the age you are? Because I'm like just blown away by the the pearls of wisdom that you're landing. Like seriously, you're amazing. Yeah. Because I, uh, life will not give you incidents based on your age, right? It's not says like, yeah, okay, like you're, you're just at this age, uh, you get that uh, uh, incident. You're that age, so you you're eligible. No, it it, it there is no partiality in experiences. Some five oh years old will get experience that. The children that we cannot even imagine, right? So I've been through a lot uh, since my 23 or 22. So it all made me who I am. <laughs> oh, that is that is so true, though. We all have a journey and a path. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. when I when I see you, all I see is this 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 light, this 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 ball of energy that just wants to infuse the world with this positivity but nobody yeah. knows what that journey yeah. entailed they yeah. just think you were yeah. born this way yeah yeah and and and, and the other things that you, you're just picking out <laughs> who can be positive come on yeah like that <laughs> let's be real <laughs> because they, they I, got so used to this virtual reality like unhappiness is the new real like uh, being negative is the reality. And if, if they see someone who is very positive or radiant or being a light, they feel like, okay, I think they're faking out for some kind of attention or craving for this uh, attention, something like that. Yeah. But it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it, they're projecting the way they feel. Yeah. That's the yes. reality of life. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, you know, Divya, it's like if you will go back to your, you said you had a lot of hardship, but 23 yeah. and yeah. if you had to go back to your 20 year old self right that's going mm-hmm. i'm not going to give your age away like you if you were 20 if you had to give advice to your 20 year old what would it be what were the uh, lessons just be authentic don't be oh. a people pleaser i have yeah. been people pleasing for no, more than 24 years and it was so tiring you know to always meet everybody's needs before your needs to always attend everybody emotion before your emotion to always make everybody's dream come true before your dream it is so tiring it was so tiring so the one advice that may give is uh, uh be authentic and uh, do what feels right for you so i, I want to jump in there so you said talking to your 20 year old son social media has just exploded for yeah. our young people and a lot of our young people identity is through social media yes. um, what would you tell someone in their late teens, early 20s about being authentic and not really just paying attention to everything that they see on social media? 
Yes. So, um, since uh, I am into this mindset coaching now, when people post something, uh, I don't know the, I, I will know the behind the scenes too. So, it slowly started uh, removing the kind of jealous or inhibitions that I get like, oh my God, you're doing so well, here am I doing nothing like that. Because I, I know what could be the ground reality too. But, you know, uh, it is very natural. We cannot be always, I, I'm being asked by some of the parents uh, who has their uh, uh, girls and their 17 or 18 to coach them. But trust me, everybody, ha I believe in the divine timing. Everybody has their timing. Yeah. If you try to make an LKG student learn trigonometry, it's going to be Greek and learning for them. And if I speak about uh, personal growth, self-development or divine or anything, if they're not interested in they're not going to pay attention to it. Right. So I cannot judge a person who is an 18 or something like, hey, you know, you're not evolved yet. Oh, I cannot do that because at that age, they are doing what is right for them. Sure. So uh, at my age of 18 or 19, I used to fantasize relationships. Like I'm going to have a prince charming. He's going to take care of me forever. And he will be going in the horse. So it's so natural for <laughs> I just love you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> because, because, uh, we have been born along with the TV. So the TV is also growing and we are also growing. We see all these uh, uh, movies, uh, Marvel kind of movies where they say there will be a Spider-Man who's being uh, backed up, who backs up his girlfriend just flying. So <laughs> we have been got into that stuff. No? So if I say an 18 year girl, like, you know, um, it's a dopamine thing. So if you say like, you know, you, you are you are going to be your own uh, uh, hero, then she'll be like, oh my God, please leave the most steps there. So we can only coach people who are really interested in this subject. You right. cannot force someone and they will be like, you know, they are trying to force something that I'm not. And even when I practice meditation, I had some of the meditation teachers who says like, Divya, you know, you can practice meditation, but enter that you are not getting into the dark side of meditation because everything has its own dark side. And if you see it's like, okay, I'm going to fly into space from the meditation or something, then it's not going to take me anywhere. So I just yeah. use meditation as a tool and I know my limits there. Like I'm just using it just to read my own thoughts and forget it. I don't see it beyond like, okay, I have to go to these astral projections. <laughs> I do a get an out of body. So if I, uh, so it's very, it's a vulnerable age. You're 18 or 19, 20 20, 21. It's vulnerable age. So we have to be careful on what we reveal and what we not reveal to. So it's very important. Which is, you've made quite a powerful statement about meditation though. You need to know when it stops and when it's working yes, for you and not yes, transgress that. Yeah. It, if I may answer your question, am I allowed to answer a question regarding social media? Oh, yeah, of course yeah. you can. <laughs> I don't enjoy social media. I don't. Okay. I like, I prefer, if I could stay away from social media, I would, but I understand the power of social media to yes. be able to share your message to the world. Absolutely. So, so, and because I'm so conscious of time, I, my, one of the strategies that I utilize, like on my phone, I don't have social media. So okay. when I'm at my desk working, then I'll make 10 minutes to go to LinkedIn or like today, this morning I went to Facebook because I knew people would react to a post that I put yesterday. I didn't go onto LinkedIn, yes. but most days I go into LinkedIn because I learn from people like Divya yeah. and I learn from people oh, like Ed Dudley so and other amazing people. So therefore I prefer LinkedIn, but social media and I are not friends. I love this personal connection. And, yeah. Yeah. and, and the other reason, like, I also do a bit of coaching and i know of somebody that committed suicide as a result of unauthentic or not real postings of somebody else that yeah. created a pretentious life that made them and the other people's other person so depressed yeah. that they took their life because yeah. they felt that they were not being successful yes. at the ages that they needed to be. Yes, and yes, it's so yes. important for people when they post, they be real. When they talk, yeah. it's it's authentic. And that's what Ed and I are trying to, not trying, we are doing yeah. it. Doing. Just yes. be. I used to be that person too. I have to be honest. Like when I see the perfect beauty with the perfect six pack, the perfect figure, I used to get <laughs> in the bitter, like, oh my God, she is beautiful even when she is sleeping. 
how it is ever possible she is uh, 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 beautiful even as soon as she gave up how is it possible when i saw the reality until i saw the reality so reality is so different from what's being projected in social media but not everybody is blessed enough to see that side you know it's it's very difficult for example uh, when i see a couple who who post a, a, a happily married life we are going to be happy forever if they if they put something like that then i have seen them coming to my coaching in just three months or four months and now i know the reality because i have seen okay yeah i had evidence of seeing like okay this is it this is different like that but not everybody has the evidence we have been yeah. so used to external validation and approval from the world but since because of some people are not able to see it evidently this kinds of uh, nightmares or suicides and these yeah. these things happen because it's like they get into illusion that everybody is happy except me everybody is beautiful except me like that oh no girl you are we are all beautiful it is yes. incredibly beautiful and he knows it look at me look at me i'm amazing look at you boy you're amazing <laughs> absolutely i think uh, the energies are very beautiful for people i yeah. believe mm. without a doubt yes I connect with energies and um, yeah. amazing people. Like people go, how do you know all of these amazing people? Because <laughs> I'm amazing. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> That's true. You, we vibrate what frequency we are in. We you're, attract you're people. A magnet. You're a magnet. You are. Yeah. You're going to attract yeah. what you give up. What yeah. you're giving out there. You put out that positive energy. energy. You're going to attract more positive people. Yeah, absolutely. and that's. And that's exactly what Debbie has been saying. As soon as she decided to change mindset and change her way, she's been attracting the right energy into her life. Yeah. And that is so, like, it's the message that everybody needs to know, right? Because yeah. often when we think our lives are just not yeah. worth it and not yeah. living, because, I mean, if you look at the suicide rates globally, yes, it's, it's, it's so sad. It, you, you, young people too. And, and and if we can and and if this conversation by three amazing people from three different continents just lands and meet and just makes sense to one person we have done what we intended to do as a team yeah that's so true. you know yes that's all we this is all we're doing actually having authentic yeah. conversation yes. sharing yes. our journeys and with the hope that people walk away with something like you know yes. what you know life is what it is and it's what yeah. i can make of it sometimes yeah. we fail debbie and you've said it so beautifully you need to take control of your life and then yeah. everything falls into it yes. and we fail. yeah you know, talk to that a little bit more like yeah um honestly for me to be um responsible or being accountable all the time is it's difficult I can do it, but there are days where uh, I get incidents that shakes me also. So that's why, you know, I have a community, some good friends around me who always some amazing people like you. So I have them holding my back. So that's why it's very important to be real, to be authentic. Otherwise, what happens, you know, we will start attracting people and uh, on the consequences of being fake, we will not be able to confront or confess our feelings that that we are having sure. for example take the social media even if we have one million or two million followers when when someone is coming for you and they're like hi how are you doing honestly what will you say i'm doing good i'm doing amazing but not people are real enough to say you know i'm not doing good and even if you say not not the people on the other end is very concerned about utilism they just yeah. ask it as a formal conversation like hey how are you hope you're doing well okay let's get into the business stuff <laughs> so not everybody is really genuine enough to Interested. lend their ears for your problem. So so that's why it's very important to create good friends, good friends. Unfortunately, we cannot have a lot of people uh, say it's like, hey, you know, uh, this is happening, that's happening, this is happening. But uh, if we have at least three or four people, just three or four people of that, that category, I think everybody would be having an amazing mental health. Oh, thank you. It's building community to be able yes. to help support you. Holding our back uh, when, in, when it's the time. Divya, when Ed, Ed ask, ask Divya, when we go visit India, what is it that we need to do? Well, that is, that is on one of my bucket lists to, to go. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, one is because I want to. I love to eat. Uh, you can't really tell right now, but I love to eat. Uh, <laughs> a little bit, you know, you know, as someone that's never been to your country, uh, that is interested in coming to your country, tell tell us a little bit about your country and what should I look for? Or where should I? Go? Uh, I think the culture differences. Every state has a different culture, and uh, as you love to eat. Uh, every state has a different food, and uh, it's very authentic and tasty as well. So in South India, it's dosa and idli. So dosa is very famous in South India. And then when you go to north, um, we call it as chapati or roti. So that is very uh, famous. So um, India is a state of wide diversity in different culture people. So you you won't feel bored of uh, okay, it's the same kind of people in all states. That bored dumb will not be. Yeah. Uh, there, so you can just be excited uh, wherever you go. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> what do you enjoy most about your country, um, Divya? Ah, okay. Um, the emotional bonding. I, I love it. Even though it has its own drawbacks too. Uh, I really agree to the fact. But um, the bonding uh, in India and uh, especially the family bonding is so good. So I really love that about India. Um, and you guys are, I'm not going to say you guys, I haven't traveled to India yet, right? But family and friends and colleagues have traveled quite extensively and they can't, cannot understand as to why I haven't been there yet because apparently it's a, they say India called you back. There's a special connection when people come to India. And they say, even though there's such diversity of people, even in terms of the poverty levels, like the rich and the poor, people hardly go hungry. And when I read Shantaram, is that true? That people put roti outside for the ones that don't have food to be able to eat? One thing that I can sure be sure about, I'm not so good at uh, politics and uh, current uh, circumstances because I, sure. I really don't like news. So okay. uh, this thing that I can uh, see in, in India is like, uh, even if you just have 10 rupee or 5 rupee, uh, you can have something uh, for eat. your stomach. So okay. it's not that, you know, the food is not affordable at all. If you just earn, uh, if you just have 20 rupees or something, it's easy to, for you to get a, a stomach food. A meal. Wow. Which is yeah. fantastic, actually. That's amazing. Yeah. I did not, I actually, I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. So you see, it's, it's, it's an amazing country. I mean, I have a book that's photographed by the author that gave me the different pictures around India, and that's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm actually fourth generation Indian. Oh, okay. Yeah. We came, my, my, yeah, uh, the slave trade. I mean, Ed and I have a lot in common. He doesn't know it yet. Uh, my grandparents came here on the ship. Uh, not my grand, my great grandparents okay. on the ship. And they landed here to work the sugarcane plantation. So slavery, it was the way I got to this land. <laughs> we learn every day, don't we? <laughs> definitely, definitely. So yeah, what yeah. else would you? And do you have more questions for? See now I got questions different. for Charmaine because she just dropped something on me that I didn't know. But we, we learn well, every day. I'll interview you another time. Um, <laughs> oh, you know, um, one of the questions then you know we put out there, and this is a question that I usually ask a lot of people when I meet them for the first time, because it lets me know what they're really about. Um, so money being no object at all. What would you be doing for, what would you be doing? Okay. I'll be traveling across the world. So tra traveling across the world, why? It's fun. It's fun, <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to see. I'm, I'm so close to nature. I love nature a lot. So I'll be traveling and just to have fun, that's it. Okay. I don't, just I'm not so serious person uh, like, I just do think even the, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Trust me. You don't have to put any box. I, I connect with you. I, I get you. <laughs> and I think South Africa is a place you should come to, actually. We have yeah, definitely. beautiful landscapes. We have something for everyone, whether you like animals, whether you like mountains, whether you like just the beach life. 
um, there's places that are extremely beautiful, places that are not so beautiful, like any country you go to, um, places that are safe and places that are not so safe. And I know yes. the States also have yes. those kind of, yeah. So, but you are, travel is on your bucket list, you'll make it happen. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Divya, do you have any questions that you want to ask us before you close up with your final comments? Uh, um, I don't have a question, but I have a compliment for you both. I mean, uh, as as you know it well, uh, it's just like a double assurance from me. Like you guys are so amazing and uh, you are radiating light and love. Uh, I can see that. And I'm so grateful for giving me such a wonderful uh, platform to just turn back and see how far I have come to. Aww. It's so comforting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nanri Divya. Nanri, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's thank you in Tamil. You are Tamil, yes. right? You're from Tamil? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay, Nandri. fabulous. Yeah. No, thank you. I mean, like, thank you for accepting and thank you for sharing your insights. I mean, yeah. between us, the goal is to be able to get this community, and it is all about connecting communities, to be yeah. able to spread that light to people yes, and, yes. and people to just transfer that energy where the world is yes. a kind of better, more beautiful place where we have less hate, yeah. more love. And how yeah. beautiful would that be? Yeah, yeah. I, I always believe that people do mistakes. It's, it's not that they want to do mistakes, it's because they don't have awareness. If you ask me that I will not commit the mistakes that I have done at my age 23 or 24 now. So it's it's just nothing but the increase of awareness. That's it. So I think if people, if, if it spreads a lot of awareness to a lot of people that this concept of mind and thoughts exist, uh, I think uh, it's, it's a good thing. We will definitely be chatting more, trust me. <laughs> And, yeah. you, and you will be sending us these two books, which will add to the post when it goes out, mm -hmm. Ed, as yeah, a sure. recommendation. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this has been a great party, I must say. I love to dance. <laughs> <laughs> I love to talk. I just love life. And so does Ed. Yeah. And so yeah. does you, yeah. right? Full of energy. That's one of the things that, you know, drew me to her, this her positive energy from the very first time that I spoke with her. And now it's talking with you, just like I'll echo what Charmaine saying. Uh, you and I are going to talk again. Uh, I'll, I'll sideline without Charmaine because I want to know more about you. Um, learn from you. Um, you have a lot of wisdom at your age. Um, and it's absolutely amazing. It's a blessing. Uh, and I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you're doing and how you're spreading love, hope, and light out there. So we appreciate you. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, thank you. So, so on behalf of Charmaine and myself, thank you for tuning in to the podcast. This is the first of many amazing conversations with amazing people across the globe. So until next time, if there's any way that we can serve you or someone in your network, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Have a great one, everybody. Cheers, everyone. Yeah, bye. Take care.